Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to continue back on the CCMP based switched video series and in this video what we're going to be doing is looking at VRRP. Now just like the previous video on HSRP, VRRP, Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol is pretty much the open standard version of what was the Cisco proprietary hot standby router protocol. So the functionality is pretty much, pretty much identical uh, in the way it works um, or rather what it seeks to achieve. Um, some of the little details are different and that's what I'm going to cover in this video but just like HSRP and just like GLBP, VRRP is a high availability solution so it gives you um, redundancy when it comes to your gateway to uh, leave the network effectively. So let's just first discuss um, some of the differences between HSRP and VRRP. So. The first thing is this concept. Well, if you remember from the last video, we had a active and a standby router. Uh, in the case of, for example, here, we had switch three was active for VLAN 10. And if you remember, we had a uh, switch four is active for VLAN 20. Now each were the backups for the other. So if switch uh, three failed here, then switch 4 could take over for the traffic for VLAN uh, 10 and vice versa. So that was all good. So like I said, we had this concept of active and standby. Now we've got the same concept effectively in VRRP. However, they're named different. The active router is now called the master, okay? And the standby is now called the backup. They perform the same functions effectively. The master is the one that's going to be taking charge as the primary router and the backup is going to be the redundant one sitting idle in case it needs to take over in the event of a failure. But they do the same things, it's just a different terminology. So that's the first thing to get out of the way. Okay, so we've got master and backup. The next thing I really want to point out is that with HSRP, you'll recall we had, well let's take the example of VLAN 10, how that was looking. So if you remember, we had switch 3 as the active, switch 4 as the backup. So I believe the IP addressing scheme, oh don't use that. The IP addressing scheme was for switch 3 here, we had an IP address of 192.168. 10.1 and the one on the right was 192.168.10.2 and each were sharing a virtual IP address which would be the VIP which would be one in the case of our example we're using the last available host address in the network which would be 254 and that meant that for the PCs down here they would just use this virtual IP address and we'd say what router was going to be active, what one was going to be a uh, standby and if one failed over the standby would then use the virtual IP address but the key point was is that the virtual IP address was a unique address it wasn't an address on this actual switch or this actual switch it was one created and just effectively shared out but in the case of VRRP, the difference is here is what you can actually do. You can actually use one of the IPs on the physical device. So in the case of, um, let's see here, this switch here, okay, we had the IP address 192.168.10.1 and this one was 192.168.10.2. What we could do is, to save IP address and space, we could just say the actual virtual IP is going to be this one. Okay, so the virtual IP is going to actually match what is on switch 3 in the left there. Now what that does mean, there's some uh, consequences to doing this. If you do that, it means that this switch here, if it's available, it will always be the master. It doesn't matter if you put the priority on the opposing switch to be much higher, it doesn't matter. If you go with the way of making the virtual IP address the same as the one in the physical, if that physical one is up, we're going to be using that one as the master regardless of anything, okay? So just be aware of that. So you can save IP address in space by not using up an additional address for a virtual IP address, but be aware that if you do that, you are effectively nominating that switch or that router to be the master, okay? 
So that's just that. I just want to point that out. Clear this and go down here. Another point I want to just make is that preemption, if you remember that concept from the previous video on HSRP, preemption is enabled by default on VRRP. On HSRP, you need to explicitly configure preemption. VRRP is on by default. So just remember that's kind of a key distinction. And another difference, and you know what, I might as well just write this down, I suppose, is if you remember the virtual MAC address and the multicast address of HSRP, well, of course, it's going to be different on VRRP. And I'll just do that here. So the actual MAC address that it's going to use is 0, 0, 0, 0. And then it's going to be dot 5e, 0, 0. And then it's going to be 0, 1. And similarly, just like HSRP, we're going to denote the group number as the last two. So x, x. So if we've got group 10, that's going to end in 0, 1, 1, 0 or effectively 0, 1, 10. Okay, so that's just, it's a very similar format to HSRP. It's just the start is really different, okay? Rather than having that Cisco beginning, the 0, 0, 0, C one, it's going to look a little bit different, so just be aware of that. And the multicast, rather than being 224.0.0.2 or 102, in the case of version 2 HSRP, the multicast is now going to be 224.0.0.8. Eighteen. Okay, so if you do your Wireshark and you pull it up and you see that multicast address, you know you're looking at VRRP. Now, the next thing I just want to just draw a comparison with is, if you recall, HSRP had default timers of a hello time of three seconds and a dead time of ten seconds. With VRRP, they've actually shortened that. So the hello time by default in VRRP is now only one second and the dead time is three times that. So, three seconds, that's your default timers, okay? So, be aware that by default that VRRP is going to have a much shorter time on your timers by default, but like I say, just what you can do with HSRP, you can also tune these timers to have a sub-second performance. So I just want to just kind of uh, highlight that because um, there's a little bit of a wrinkle with this configuration that I think it's important to point out. And the first detail of that, which I want to highlight, is that if you recall from HSRP, when you configure the timers, you would manually and explicitly say what the hello time was and what the dead timer was, okay? In VRRP, the dead timer is simply inferred by whatever you make the hello timer. So what that means is, whatever you set the hello timer to be, the dead timer will automatically be three times of that, okay? So you don't need to actually say, this is the hello timer, this is the dead timer, just type in the hello and the dead will be worked out as three times of that value of your hello, okay? So be aware of that, it's a little bit of a difference. And the second thing I want to point out is that with a VRRP, you can have your master switch and a backup or several backups. And what you can do is instruct the master to simply advertise advertise that timer and you can tell the backups to simply learn what that timer is. So you don't need to explicitly configure that. But again, there actually is another wrinkle to that, and that is that if you want to have sub-second timers, millisecond timers, that you're going to actually have to explicitly configure it on both sides of the connection. You can't just say that can be learned. If you type in the command to have millisecond timers and advertise it out by the master, you can configure it on the master side and tell the backup to learn it, but if you actually check your show VRRP, the output is going to show that the failover time is not going to be a uh, sub-second, it's just not going to learn it, so you want to configure both sides to have um, sub-second timers on each end of the connection if you want that quick convergence. Now, the other point which I want to make on that is that when it comes to actually calculating the failover, it's not exactly what the dead timer is. Now that might sound strange. So if you've got a hello time of one second, the dead time is there for three seconds. But what you're also going to get is get this additional timer called a skew. It's a skew in the... It's an additional value effectively, which you add on to the dead timer to get the true failover time. 
Now that's actually a function of the priority value which you set and we use this calculation to calculate it. What you do is you first take the value 256, okay? And then you minus whatever the priority is on the switch of the router and then you divide that value again by 256. Okay, and that's going to give you a time in seconds which you add on. So this calculation actually has an exponential effect. So to highlight that, let's take an extreme use case. Say for example that the master switch was using a pretty low priority of 10. Okay, say that others are using 9 and 8, so the highest one was 10 but it still is a low priority. Let's do this calculation, okay? So we'll just go here and do calculator. And we do the sum here, okay? So the priority we're going to use is 10, so we'll be do... We'll do 256 minus 10, okay? Equals 246 and then divide that by 256. Okay, so we've now added on 0 0.96. So that's almost another second added on by using that low priority. Now that might not that might not seem like a lot, but if you're trying to get sub-second conversions using millisecond timers, but you're still using a very low priority, you might have fast millisecond timers, but you're also going to have to await the additional skew time of almost a second on top of that. Okay? So by contrast, let's just see this exponential effect here. Let's say we made the priority a uh, 255, okay, rather than 10, we could just do 256 minus 255, and now we're doing 1 divided by 256, so all we're adding on is 0 0.003, okay, that's a, a much, much uh, smaller amount, okay, so the skew timer will only be 0 0.003 plus your millisecond timer, so be aware of that, if you're using millisecond timers, higher priorities might be your best friend there, okay? So just keep that in mind when it comes to doing that configuration, okay? So, let's just start and do some basic configurations then, okay? So, like I say, just like I had in the previous video, we've got VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. So we do a show VLAN brief. You can see VLAN 10 and 20, we've got some basic IP addressing. Okay, so 10.1 and 20.1 and the one on the right is going to be 10.2, 20.2 and we'll use the same virtual IP address as the last video of 254. Like I say, you can use um, one of the actual physical ones. So I could use 10.1 or I could use 10.2 but I'm not going to do that in this demonstration. Just be aware that you can do that if you want. So what I'm going to do is the configuration is really simple. So it's just really similar to HSRP. Instead of using standby, your keyword here is simply VRRP. Easy to remember. Okay. And then just the group number, so we'll do group 10 since it's VLAN 10, keep it nice and simple. And what I'm going to do is do IP, and if I do the IP of 192.168.10.254, okay. And what I'm also going to do is do VRRP 10, and I'll make this one the priority, so I'll make it 120. And I'll also do VRRP. 10 and we'll look at the timers okay so we'll do timers and like I say if we want this is going to be the master we're going to do advertise okay if we want to do millisecond we'll do msec and we'll maybe say 200 millisecond and watch this there is no option for default timers eh, sorry dead timers it's just the hello you put in okay so that's that one done and if we go across here and do uh, int VLAN 10, VRRP 10, IP 192.168.10.254. And just to highlight this, um, if I do timers learn, we're going to see if I do a show VRRP, okay, we're actually not going to get that kind of sub-second convergence, okay, look at that, you see that? We're not going to get it because we're trying to learn a sub-second timer. If we want to get that sub-second action going, we actually explicitly configure it both sides. Like I say, the learning is only for timers of, say, one second, two seconds, three seconds, so on and so forth. Um, so VRRP 10, and we'll do timers. In fact, do you know what I'll do? I'll need to take out, I actually explicitly need to take out the learn command. So I'll go back here and do no. So learn is completely taken off. VRRP timers and... 
we'll do advertise our own one as well and msec we'll do 200 okay so now if we do show vrrp we can see that's actually come down a little bit okay so the dead time is going to be three times that and like i say if you want it to go right down you could put it down to say 50 milliseconds rather than what i've got here is the 200 you can really shorten that right down if you want it uh, down as low as you can but like I say that's pretty much the basic overview of VRRP I don't want to go over it too much because like I say it's very very similar to HSRP if you're confused about what it or how it really works look at the VR the sorry the HSRP video first and then just look at this video just to see the difference the slight difference between the two protocols to get a rough idea okay the next video which I'm going to be doing is going to be on GLBP that one actually is a good bit different so I'll be spending a little bit more time in that one and that'll be us for our high availability section of the CCNP Switch series, okay? And then we'll move on to security and stuff like that. So that's the end of the video. Thanks very much, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.